In this episode, I'm going to talk about what I perceive is going on with uh, largely Marvel, but it sure seems like Star Wars may be also getting into this game as well. Of course, they're both under the corporate umbrella of Disney, and they haven't had exactly a stellar track record lately of putting out good quality content unless you consider the message to be good quality content. So let's get into what Star Wars and to a larger degree Marvel are getting into, uh, which is an old game, very well established, but it's being done in a unique way uh, in today's time. We're going to be talking about the old bait and switch tactic. Let's get into it. Welcome to the Way of the Dad podcast, where we fearlessly dive into the depths of dadness. If you like what you are hearing, please share the podcast and give it a review on the platform where you listen. Thank you. So this is going to be, I said I was going to try to do this kind of an episode going forward. So this is going to be the inaugural episode of Driving with Dad, or Dad's Driving Time, or You're Stuck in the Car with Dad, so shut up and listen. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure out a name. I don't, I, I, I'll come up with something, I promise. So anyway, um... I'd said that I was going to be trying to do a, um, maybe capturing some thoughts that I have while I'm driving, because for some odd reason, the thoughts I have uh, while I'm driving are coming fast and furious, but when I get home to actually sit down and try to record, uh, a lot of times I can't grab them anymore, they're gone, or, you know, even though I wrote down a couple notes, jotted down a couple notes, I can't quite get that energy back. So... This is one of those things that's been bothering me or irritating me or I don't know. We can call it what we want here. But this revolves around, uh, I'm just going to throw it at Disney in general at the moment. Um, There may be others that are doing this, but Disney, specifically Marvel and Star Wars, seem to be doing an awful lot of this right now, and it's really, really, really annoying. And what I'm getting at is they're using the bait and switch a little too often. They have went to the well on this puppy quite a bit lately. And so I'll just throw some examples from what I'm talking about. And let's see here. We've got... Let's see here. We've got Loki, uh, the MCU uh, Disney Plus show, which should have been called Lady Loki because it was obvious that it had very little to do with Loki. Uh, Tom Hiddleston's Loki is basically used as a comedy device, which is pretty damn insulting. You know? Um, I mean, he's basically gets gets his ass handed to him all throughout the show. He barely affects directly what goes on. And it very it becomes very obvious with the show that it's more about Lady Loki or Sylvie in this case, which is a stand-in. Uh, I don't know if the name Sylvie was ever used in the comics, but Lady Loki was a thing in the comics, a variant. Or I don't know if variant was used back then, but, you know, and uh, a multiverse... Uh, alternate version of Loki. Although at times I think 
In some comic runs, I believe the Enchantress was, for lack of a better term, Lady Loki. Um, but so the, the comic, the, the comic roots are there for this. But the show is called Loki, as opposed to what it was really about, which was Sylvie, aka Lady Loki. That's how I'm going to term it. Then we've got uh, Hawkeye, which was really, you know, not about Clinton Barton Hawkeye. It was about Kate Bishop Hawkeye, really. Uh, Clinton Barton was there. Um, and then that show had all kinds of problems with it. It wasn't, it wasn't, uh, as bad as some of the other shows. I really didn't like Captain America, or I'm sorry, Falcon and Winter Soldier. Um, not because, I, I mean, I liked, uh, Sebastian Stan and Anthony Mackie. Uh, I just, the villain angle was not very good. I, I think they should have went hard with John Walker as the villain as opposed to this nebulous kind of group that's terrorist, but wait, they're not really kind of terrorist, but they have a heart or compat or something. I, you know, I don't know. They're trying to be Robin Hood or something. They're bad, but not quite bad, but they do really bad things, but they have what, uh, you know, they have a reason or something. I don't know. It was really kind of dumb to me, and the show couldn't decide whether they wanted to make them full-on villains or not. Um, but with Hawkeye, it was really about Lady Hawkeye or Hawkeye, Kate Bishop Hawkeye. It wasn't really about Clint Barton, and even though it revolved around his history and his past as Ronan, which I I saw uh, that was a massive missed opportunity to go hard into that darkness that he was at at that point in time. And that show couldn't figure out what it wanted to be. Did it want to be a comedy? Or did it want to be a serious introspective, you know, uh, con- you know, actions have consequences type drama? And it, it kept trying to go back, it kept trying to have its cake and eat it too by doing both of those. But again, the, the core tenet of this, or the core part of this is It's a bait and switch. You think you're going in and watching a show about Hawkeye that they will introduce the the new Hawkeye character, but it really kind of becomes a fair amount about Kate Bishop. Not as bad as Loki, but it was still it was still definitely there. And you could tell this was supposed to be the I don't know what, the send-off for Clinton Barton, but it didn't feel like a send-off. It just felt like some things that happened. And then they tease Mockingbird at the end of it. Great. Woo. Okay. Then we've got... Then we've got what I'm worried about with Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness because I feel like it's going to be Wanda and the Multiverse of Madness. And this hurts me because I like Wanda a lot. But I, I, this feels like it's going to be more about other characters and other people. And then there's this weird thing they're doing in the trailers where Wanda's saying, you know, you break the rules and you're a hero and I break the rules and I'm a villain. That doesn't seem fair. Yet in the trailer... <clears throat> Uh, Doctor Strange is the only one I see being brought before some kind of tribunal or judgment panel. Uh, don't see, I don't see Wanda being brought in front of anything. It doesn't look like she's, you know, paying any prices for what she did to all those people in uh, Westview. Um, but, you know, I guess they'll never know what she sacrificed, which is ridiculous all by itself. That line there was like, that. that show was pretty good all the way through. Uh, the last episode seemed like a hurry up and wrap up the loose ends type episode. Like they just, it felt very crammed and very rushed and it went from a, 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 an interesting premise to standard MCU villain punch up just with magic this time. 
and uh, and then White Vision just randomly learns about himself from the not Vision Vision, not real Vision Vision, I guess, and uh, and then just takes off. You know, whatever. We'll see him later, I guess. And uh, so it's just a very uneven show. But you know, Wanda, they 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 were really clear about it that Wanda literally tortured and terrorized those people for, I don't know, weeks, months, whatever it was. An extraordinary period of time where she's basically turning them mentally into slaves. I guess we didn't have a conversation about consent in that particular show, did we? But in the trailers for Multiverse of Madness, uh, Doctor Strange is the only one that looks like he's being put on trial for anything or being held accountable for anything or whatever. I'm still interested in the movie. I'm still interested to see what they're going to be doing here with it. Um, And I know they've got a new character. uh, What was it? America Chavez or something like that. Uh, Okay. Uh, You know, again, side characters are cool. You want to introduce a side character, and then if people really like them, introduce them and, you know, give them their own show to really flesh them out. Great, fine, whatever. But make sure they stay side characters in somebody else's damn movie. I didn't have a problem with Ant-Man and the Wasp because it was about Ant-Man and the Wasp. Although she definitely upstages him a lot. I get it. You know, it's not done in quite such an annoying fashion. Um, But I'm I'm really... mm, Let's say I'm holding my breath on Multiverse of Madness. I'm I'm hoping that they don't do a bait and switch there. But then that leads me to the next one. And, oh boy, does it feel like there's a bait-and-switch coming with Thor Love and Thunder. It feels like this is going to be Lady Thor Love and Thunder with the guy that used to be Thor that's now again on a self-reflection, self-finding journey, even though he is thousands of years old. We're treating him like he just turned 25 and he's got to go backpacking in the European uh, uh, countryside or something like that. Why, why does Thor need to go find himself again? But we're going to do that, and, you know, at least we're getting rid of Fat Thor, because that was... I don't know. It was funny at the moment. I don't know if I like it later, uh, as it's aged. So, we'll see. But uh, definitely feels like it's going to be about Lady Thor... And um, feeling like the Guardians of the Galaxy probably aren't going to be in there very long. That's the way it feels from the trailers. They're going to be in there just enough to show you, yep, they're still around and kind of prep you for the next Guardians of the Galaxy movie, which that's okay. But doesn't feel like they're going to be hanging around for an extraordinary portion of this movie. Maybe they'll be there in the beginning and then come back at the end to help. Or they'll be there for maybe the first third or less and then exit stage right. But it feels like, here we go again, we're getting, you know, those characters you loved from the Infinity War saga? Well, let me tell you, you're going to love it how we get rid of them and replace them with other people. And, but we're going to give them the same name that they didn't really earn. Like, I still don't understand why Hawkeye is a mantle we have to pass on. For the love of God, of all the names, that is the least mantle-like name there is. That was his code name as an Avenger, Hawkeye. We don't need to have Hawkeye 2. You could have called her, you know, uh, you can't use Bullseye, that's already been used. Um, You know, Sharpshooter or... um, uh, Lady Hawk, I'd be too derivative. But you could have come up with a name for Kate Bishop Hawkeye instead of Hawkeye. Captain America. I'm not a big fan of using that as a mantle that must be passed on, but I can at least understand it a little bit. And, you know, there's, you know, Bucky Barnes has been Captain America, Sam Wilson, you know. Um, and, um, uh, 
the guy the guy from the show um he he's been he's been captain america in the comics although he becomes us agent which at least that was accurate but you know we don't why do we always have to have these mantles passed on thor should be thor unless they're what going to what are they going to do change his name to odin cuz odin's gone now so now he takes over the role of odin is that what we're doing where these are just roles that are passed on to people these you know norse gods i i don't know it just i'm not a big fan of how they're doing this i'm not a big fan of the way they're unceremoniously shoving off the old guard for the new hotness that they're bringing in which I say that totally sarcastically because most of these characters they're pulling from in the comics, these characters haven't been around that long. They have never... I, I don't know how many have ever had successful comic book runs, by the way. But anytime they... You know, Sam Wilson, Captain America, maybe has done okay. Uh, Bucky Barnes, Captain America, has done all right. But... Uh, I don't know what kind of comic book number sales uh, Kate Bishop's been getting as Hawkeye over the years. I don't know... uh, Well, I do know for a fact that Riri Williams, Ironheart, uh, has had two spectacularly failing uh, comic book runs. I mean, epic levels of bad. Like, you might have started packaging up some of those uh, leftover issues in cereal boxes just to get rid of them. So, that's not good. Um, I don't know if Lady Loki or Sylvie or Enchantress Loki or however, you know, whichever way they're going with it. I don't know if that's ever had good runs. Maybe it has. But I I sure don't remember making a big deal out of them when I was collecting comics back in the day. Uh, Lady Thor, that's relatively newer. Um, Maybe it has sold some, but... You know, this whole thing in the comic book run when Thor says, you know what, actually, you're a better Thor than I ever could be. What? Just, really, what? You can't just say, you could just say, all you had to do is say is, hey, you know, I've given up that role, I'm I'm on to this role, whatever, but you're doing a great job as Thor. You know, whatever. Something. What's this whole, you're a better Thor than I could ever be? Except he is Thor. Like, that's his name. I don't know. It just feels very bait-and-switchy. Um, it's getting really annoying. This whole, we must pass these names on. It, it's really annoying. I really tire of it. And... You know, Moon Knight has been a little different. Uh, that show... I like Moon Knight. Uh, I don't know if I like what they're doing with the Stephen Grant character, but I'm willing to be patient in letting them evolve that character a little closer to the comic book version, but it, it definitely isn't a lot like the comic book version right now. Now, Mark Spector, that character is. I really don't like what they've done with Mr. Knight making him basically just the same goofballiness that they got the Stephen Grant character. Uh, Mr. Knight was not that at all. He wasn't kind, he wasn't quite the, uh, the brutality of the Moon Knight persona, but he could be quite brutal when he wanted to be, but he was more calculating and efficient and strategic No less brutal when needed to be, but he was more of the tactician. He was going to get the same results, but he was going to do it, um, let's just say, a little smarter. Not necessarily less bloody, though. So, I don't know... I don't know where they're going long-term with the Moon Knight thing, but I, I just... I don't know why we can't have a Loki show about Loki. Introduce Lady Loki in it. Let her be a side character. And if people love it, then there you go. You got a whole nother show now. 
but it just feels like, you know, that's how that's at least that's how it used to be. You know, when uh, they introduced uh, Punisher in the Daredevil shows, and I know that was Marvel TV over on Netflix, which is different than the MCU. But the the fan reaction to Punisher made them make a deal really fast and fast track a show for Punisher because they just they loved the portrayal John Barenthal brought. So okay, that's fine. I don't know why we can't do that though. And I'm tired of some of these main characters having shows named after them, but they kind of be they're kind of being turned into punchlines and sidestepped or, or, or side uh, pushed to the side for some other character who's gonna basically take their place and be so much better than they ever could be. Now, the Star Wars side of this is not as big, uh, at least as of yet, but it sounds like and it looks like they're starting to go down this road a little bit, too. And specifically, I'm talking about the upcoming Kenobi show. Now, this show is not run by Dave Favreau, or uh, uh, John Favreau and Dave Filoni. This show was run by Kathleen Kennedy before she lost a lot of her uh, executive uh, producer privileges. She still works for them. She still gets paid by them. But my understanding is more or less she's been uh, totally gutted as far as power goes. It's basically, here's your money. Sit down and be quiet. You're no longer in charge. <clears throat> but I do worry about this show because this show should be, it's called Obi-Wan Kenobi. And I'm starting to wonder how much it's going to be about this new Inquisitor who has never been seen anywhere in the comics or in the games or the cartoons or anything. This new Inquisitor, Reva. I don't know what number, sister, brother, whatever, you know, sibling she'll be. Um, that's how they name these Inquisitors, the first brother and the second sister and the third sister and the fourth brother and whatever. But, you know, is this going to be a thing where she ends up saving Obi-Wan and restoring his hope and all this other stuff? And look, there's a way to do that in a script that you'll make me buy it. But lately they haven't bothered with that. They just shoehorn something in that's, you know, very woke and progressive and whatever. And it's like, you don't even need to do that. All you need to do is write a good script and I'll buy it. But you want to shoehorn these things in because you don't really have very good ideas. And you're just like, whatever, just make it work. And it really does feel like the equivalent, the scripting equivalent of square peg forced into round hole. And it's always obvious. Felt that way when I was watching The Batman. I really enjoyed that movie almost all the way through, right up until near the end, when all of a sudden, out of nowhere... Catwoman starts talking about making old old white rich men pay. Even though there had been no setup for that, it seems like it comes totally out of left field. It's like the it's the the that sound of the of the uh, record needle scratching across the record as you know as the music stops. It's just like wait what? That just felt weird. Felt random. It, it'd be one thing if she was talking about it the whole movie. And so here we go with Kenobi. What are we doing here? What's the point of this? Are they going to be just, is she going to be the the thing that saves Obi-Wan from Vader? Is she going to be the one who sacrifices herself for him? And again, it's possible to do this well. They just usually don't, is what I'm getting at. You know, beyond that in Star Wars, you know... Mandalorian should probably be pretty good. Boba Fett was a necessary bait and switch from what I've heard, from what I've been, you know, hearing from a lot of the places I get information from. It sounded like that show was absolutely a travesty and they just started shoving Mandalorian in it because, quite frankly, they knew it was really bad. And so they tried to get rid of as much as they could get away with getting rid of, shove some Mandalorian in there and just get through it so that they can 
get it over with because it was already fully made. And yet they were still in production for a lot longer and they had to do a lot of reshoots. And there was an extraordinary amount of editing going on leading up to the week of the finale of Book of Boba Fett. So I'll throw that in the bait and switch category, but that one was more necessary because apparently the show was really bad. If you hated the uh, Power Ranger Vespa scooter bike gang thing, whatever that was, if you didn't like that, based on what I've heard, you really wouldn't have liked the original episode five and six. Like at all. It was going to be a whole lot more of that kind of crap. So, and I mean, right now with Star Wars, that's about all I have to say on that one. But it sounds like, you know, I hope it's not. I hope Kenobi is phenomenal and it's really, really well done. And the acting is great, which it should be. And the writing is great, which, eh, I don't know. Star Wars has been pretty hit and miss in that regard for a long time now. So we'll see. But, um... Yep. So we'll have to see how those go. Um, I hope they turn out better. Um, But I did say that I was going to be doing... Uh, some of these. Let me know what you think of the quality of this episode. Um, I'm going to do everything I can with, uh, you know, post-production editing as far as getting the background noise out and things, but this just felt like something I wanted to try because, like I said, these ideas come to me better when I'm driving around in the car for my day job than they do when I'm back at home at night um, or first thing in the morning on Saturdays and Sundays or things like that. So let me know what you think. Um, And I I think I'm going to go ahead and cut off the RSS feed off the Facebook page and start directly sharing either uh, YouTube or Rumble videos uh, to the Facebook page. When I have done that, it seems like the algorithm pushes it harder or at least makes it more visible. But it seems like when I have the podcast episodes up, it it doesn't get seen very well. So... I'm going to try this out for a little bit. Uh, Let me know what you think, though. Uh, You can definitely respond on the Facebook page, on the video. You can comment on the YouTube or the Rumble videos, uh, or you can just email me direct at wayofthedadpodcast at gmail.com. So that'll about do it for today. And until next time, take care and have a great day. Thanks for listening. The Way of the Dad podcast is produced and recorded by, well, me, a stunningly average husband and father, who appreciates all of the likes, shares, reviews, and support you give. If you would like to reach out, you can find the podcast on its Facebook page, and of course you can email me at wayofthedadpodcast at gmail.com. Come back next time as we continue to fearlessly dive into the depths of dadness.